Hi everybody, my name is Jessica Holyfield. I'm a professional dancer, professional dance choreographer, and dance educator based out of the southeast of the United States. And we're taking a look at Latrice versus Redelik from Street Woman Fighters season two. I believe this has to do with uh, the worst ranked dancer battle, right? So I know that there's a couple of these have, that have been released with the respective, like the person who was chosen for the dance rank and who they chose as the worst dancer. I'm assuming that's what this battle is about. We're gonna take a look at it. I'm very excited about it. Let's get into it. Let's go fight! Okay. She's mixing a lot of hip hop. Yeah, with a lot of little Afro nuances as well. Wow. That's energy right there. Energy. I will say she's really holding it down a lot more here than she did in her other battles. Alright, that was our battle. Let's take a look back. Let's start out with Latrice. Um This was such this was this was her song. This was her jam. And get it? Haha, <laughs> Jam Republic. <laughs> oh man, bless it. Um You can just tell by the energy of everybody from Jam as well as her. She's like, this is it, game over, you know. I noticed that she's hitting a lot of these kind of pockets or these types of grooves that are affiliated with the era of the culture of the era it's my this is my my jam i'm always a fan of this hey so take note though like she goes hit and boom boom she's so full with her energy which is definitely when you approach a song like this you gotta be full right she doesn't do she's not full the whole time either and that's a really important thing to note here right is that she is very like varying up her choices by like going really big and then tightening it up to be able to go faster with her hips which is really nice you know and she is doing a good job of getting all close and personal without completely putting all of her weight on red lake which i think is super good to know here hey hey you know so it is nice she's doing a little bit of crisscrosses and then she does a little bit of the taps of her feet here just do it. And that right there, that was a, a tad simple, you know, but w here's the thing. I've always, I've already said this many a times at this point. Um, certain things fly depending on who you're against as well as what you've demonstrated beforehand. Do you know what I mean? So there's a lot of context to be had here, right? So I'm assuming that this took place after the dance rank mission because uh, a lot of the captions of these were showing like worst dancer, right? Um, and I'm assuming that those, these were the people that were chosen by those who won their dance ranks and were directing their own concept videos. So I, I'm, I think it's a pretty safe to say guess on that. So, you know, with Latrice, she is popping off. She has such an authentic groove. You can really tell that this is her. Like, this is how she grew up. This wasn't like a... Um, part of it is... Of course, it's learned, but it's turned implicit. So... Um, there is, an, and Reddit is an example of explicitly learning these grooves. Latrice is an example of implicitly learning these grooves. 
the difference between those is this implicit is it's something that just turns it's it's something that is ingrained enough similar to breathing or blinking or riding a bicycle like something that is just implicit it's that you're just able to just conjure up and do and with explicit is something that has been learned it's something that's been having to process and you've made a sincere effort to try to integrate yourself within it and you have muscle memory with it but this is a really good example of the difference between the two both are fine but you just gotta know that she's got culture she's got authenticity rawness and total vibe and just vibing it out right here hey yeah, so she's doing a lot of variations of hips. We've seen some of these already before. Um, it was with uh, her, uh, was it her 1v1? Yeah, as well. Well, her 1v1 was more of an Afro groove pocket. It was a little bit slower, more legato. But she did take a more Afro approach with Kirsten. This has slight Afro nuances to it, but I would equate it more towards that 2000s schoolgirl hip-hop is what this feels, you know, like... Whenever you see, um, oh, what was it? There was like a whole series of movies. There's like Drumline, Stomp the Yard. There's a whole era of of these movies that came out that was just it was it was uh, really putting black culture on the forefront, but like in the proving like breaking boundaries, really um, showcasing variety of types of people in America, and I absolutely ate all of those up. I absolutely love those. And so there's like the whole era of music that also happened around the time in the 2000s where I feel, of course, in the 90s and 80s and everything. I'm talking about 2000s specifically because that's my era that I like really grew up in music wise, even though I'm from the 90s. Um, just this era of music, I think, is really pivotal with the millennial generation of this kind of rawness, this type of culture here, you know, in America, where it's it's a sense of like you with parties and with line dances and with just vibes and hanging out with each other. And this is a lot of the kind of stuff that you would do, you know, as you learn these things. And sometimes no one would teach you. You just have to follow along and do it. Now, I'm not talking about in this particular context, but I would say like this is this is an, a really great example of culture. Now, is Latrice American? No, she's not. But I'm saying like there's something to be said about this era of music with a particular pocket that comes with it. It's something a lot of times is implicitly put in generation to generation um, that can be explicitly learned too because I learned some aspects of that. That's just a really, this. that's just, I feel like I'm kind of just talking over and over about the same thing, but I'm just saying like, that's, I hope that helps understand a little bit more. Just kind of her fullness that you see here is something really, I was really, and she's really hitting it. She's hitting it in predictable, in predictable pockets, like not pockets, but counts. So she's hitting it on both sides, and then she's hitting it on very obvious places where you would put those grooves. So is this the most creative thing? No, it's not. But did she vibe with the song, how it needed to be vibed with? Yes, she did. So, and also know who she's against as well. She's not against Will Flow. She's not against other people where they may have a leg up in another skill set compared to Latrice. She's up against somebody who's a choreographic, explicit variation of what she is culturally used to. That's something to keep in mind as well. Not just crediting Redalink at all. I'm just saying that when we've seen her track record of her battle so far, they have not been in her favor. At least some of them have not been. And I know there was other outside circumstances with them. But when you take notice, you know she did much better here. But I'm going to go ahead and tell you, Redalik did a very similar variation three times in her 40 seconds. And that alone, I feel, and that's something that Latrice did not do. So when you, when you don't... So I'm assuming because, you know, Latrice did it and then Redalik did it, there's a good chance that this is Beyonce, right? Um, good chance that that kind of... <laughs> hair flipping situation is in the track or in the music video or something of that nature um hence why latrice did it and then red Elite did it not as out of a response but because it just matches the music and that's something that a lot of times choreographers who freestyle do is if you have a song that you're familiar with especially if you know that there's a dance to it you're going to take inspiration from the dance that's what happened with super kill they did it with a new thing was it smf smf um 
uh, piece that was done by Vata, right? And which eventually we'll get into the street man fighter world, uh, but we're, we're living in the street woman world right now, you know, but that's just a side note. I will get to it. Uh, but you do tend to notice those things. You take inspiration off of that because it helps with your musicality and it also shows um, you're like kind of taking, giving credit to who you kind of reference this from, which is really fun. And that's just kind of how choreographers do it because we, we have to be, the part of the responsibility of a choreographer is, you know, whenever you're taking inspiration from someone, it is, I think it's important to really try to give credit where credit is due sometimes, you know, but that's just, that's just my personal perspective on that. Yeah, so if you take a notice here too, Latrice had very clear movements in between what she was doing, um, in, uh, in between her grooves and in between when she would pop off with Red Elite, some of her transitions between her arms and to her legs would turn um, are, are not as clear as they could be. Now notice, this is the first time we're seeing her do this hinge. This is great, you know. It's, it's, it's important to be able to be mindful of the knees whenever you do this. Um, and you don't want to overcompensate too much weight into the knees. You want to really make sure that you're using your hips and pushing more weight onto the feet here. But, I mean, it just kind of depends on the person. And also, yeah. Yeah, so, like, she's hitting it pretty well. But also notice, too, that sometimes she's resetting because she's trying to do so much power to match Latrice's energy, which makes total sense to me. But a lot of times when you lose your balance, she would kind of just do, like, a hop back, which is what just happened, if you want to take a look at that. Ready? Da, da. She's really going for it. Ready? Da, da, da. Because she went back and she kind of lost her weight catered to the back, she hopped back. And that's why she did that. It's a really smart move here. And then that was number two. Notice she dropped back a very similar way, but she came out of it in a different way. So, okay. We can we can make do with that. I really like that moo, 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 moo. Boom, you know? But... But also, Latrice is like, girl, you're not I me. Mean, if you look at, look, she's either vibing with the music or part of her, if she's like super in it, um, is, hey, you gotta ride the rhythm the way it needs to be written and you ain't hitting it. And I will say this is a note for both of them. We noticed that um, they, they both had their legs separated for the majority of both of their sets. Um, but because we've already passed the trees, I'm not going to like overly analyze that. But talking about Red Elite, that is something that we're noticing here, right? Like she's not making a lot of choices. See, like a lot of her posture, like she's not, um, she's keeping this pose and she's utilizing her chest a lot. I mean, sometimes she ends up using her knees to help create an aesthetic, but she's really using this deep pocket of her lower half to really showcase what she's doing in her upper body. That's something that we're noticing here. Right, and then there again, she does kind of a hinge, but instead of dropping back, she's already down. And so that's just another thing as well. But, and then she goes back again. Um, and that's kind of like my big note. You just want to be very mindful that even though this is technically different than what she did earlier, it is very similar in dynamic and hitting a very similar part of the music. Hence why it looks a little bit too predictable and a little bit too... Um, uh, to overdone in the amount of time that is given and we don't know what she's what we're seeing there and that's fine you know but but I mean Red Elite, mad impressed like she held it down so much more than she did in any other battle so I'm very mad respect for her for really holding it down you know it's good there's a smile look there. So Latrice is smiling. She's smirking. Here's the thing. I think they're on good terms. And this is just kind of one of the formalities that comes with it. I don't think there's true bad blood between them. Also, there's... Remember, it's MNAT. They want to make whatever they want to make out of these shows. I think they're on good terms. I think it's fine. And this is just a formality of the show. It's got to happen. And regardless of that, that was a, that was a, good, that was a good battle and I really enjoyed it. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope this was helpful in some way. If you want to see more Street Woman Fighter content or other content in general, ad-free, as well as early access as I record these, you can head over to Patreon, and I have all of that squared away over there. I would love to see you hang out over there, but if you're one who just wants to hang out and vibe out here, 
just watching it on YouTube. You can just uh, you can just hang out and do that too. That's also great. I always appreciate the support, and it's always nice to be able to discuss with y'all, regardless if it's on Patreon or on YouTube. Both are great. So I will catch you guys on the flip side, and I'll check you later.